Nebraska's winter wheat condition took a big hit this month. According to the latest National Agricultural Statistics Service report, only 34 percent of the crop was rated good to excellent, 28 points lower than the beginning of March. 27 percent of the crop this week was rated poor to very poor. On March 20th, the Nebraska Wheat Board said signs of winter kill were evident in southwest Nebraska, with the most injured fields showing 60 to 80 percent damage. It also noted dryness as a concern. This week's U.S. Drought Monitor from UNL showed a sizable increase in moderate drought conditions in central Nebraska. The 22 percent now in moderate to severe drought is an increase of 20 points and the most since June. We traveled through southwest Nebraska this week to see those injured fields. We also talked with Nebraska Extension's Bob Klein, who said this damage is not only historic, but will also continue to impact future crops. Well, I've got over 50 years in uh, southwest Nebraska and west central, and I've never seen injury this bad in such a wide area. And I think we've had the biggest fluctuation on temperatures and that was part of the damage. And then we have a lot of other things in there too. How widespread is the damage, Bob? Well, the worst is in southwest Nebraska and then that southeast part of the Panhandle. And then, of course, it extends a little bit farther east and farther north. And, but the worst damage is over here in the southwest. And some of that fields won't be worth leaving. What caused the injury? Well, there's a number of factors. One is the dramatic changes in temperatures we had. In this particular field that we're in here uh, in Chase County, we uh, had warm temperatures in September, October, and then early November. In fact, on November 9th, uh, the temperature was 78 degrees. Uh, four days later, on November 13th, it was a minus seven. Then also on December 31st, it was down to 20 below zero. What other things led to damage in different fields? Yeah, well, we see all kinds of injury in these. It's variety that makes a difference and so forth. Uh, the tillage practices are different. If they went out and tilled the uh, ground before planting, dried out the soil a little bit, we're seeing a lot of injury. Our early planting this year really got hammered. And I think the reason that was is because we had such good growing conditions through September and October and even early November that it used up all the moisture. And then, of course, that dry soil was a major factor in the injury. As you mentioned, you're in uh, research plots near Enders, Nebraska, and we can see in those plots how much of a difference variety selection can make. You also have trials near Trenton, Nebraska, where you say that problems from the drought of 2012 are still impacting wheat. Can you explain how that is? Yeah, uh, we've got plots uh, down in Hitchcock County where uh, on October the 18th, uh, 2012, a lot of silt blew into the north part of the field and we actually lost our plots in the north part of the field there uh, because of all that silt that blew in on that windstorm on October 18th of 2012. What should farmers do, Bob, in those situations where injury and winter kill is very evident? Well, it's a number of things. One, of course, before you do anything, you wanna go in and talk to your farm service agency and discuss the problem with them, and then also talk to your crop insurance people. Then also, before you do anything, look at any herbicides you may have uh, used on the field that maybe won't let you rotate to some of the crops that you want to. So really check all those things out before you make any decision on what's the best way to go from here. Is there a way to first assess what kind of yields you might be looking at before you decide what to do with that field? Yeah, we actually have a pretty good NEB guide on estimating yields. And what you do is you figure out what row spacing you have and then the number of plants you've got per foot a row. And you can look at that and it gives you a pretty good idea of what the potential is out there. Now, you kind of want to take into account that it's real early yet and we, uh, wheat hasn't completely tillered. And uh, so your accurate accuracy is not as good as if you had tillered wheat and have those tillers to count too. And we'll probably have a few less tillers in that. That NEB guide uses five tillers on the average. And I would probably be using three or four uh, this year because of the injury we've had on the wheat. And if the farmer does decide then to abandon the crop, Bob, what are the other options they might have for planting into that ground? 
we probably think in many of these areas out here, a grain sorghum will be the number one choice or something like proso millet, or in some cases, even forages. Now, if you plant some forages out though, one of the things is don't cut it real short. Keep some of that residue out there to catch the snow and to take through the fallow period and so forth. So uh, we really need to leave some residue out in these fields to protect them from wind and water erosion. Finally, Bob, what does this wheat damage do to the next crop that might go in for the rotation out there in southwest Nebraska? Yeah, well, one of the big things here is having a successful winter wheat crop. If you have that good 60, 70, 80 bushel wheat residue, that really helps us reduce evaporation and also helps suppress the weeds. So we can be pretty successful with corn, uh, grain sorghum, or other crops if we have that good wheat residue. If we don't, we really uh, reduce our chances of being successful with the next crop. So if we go into a field that only has 30 bushel wheat uh, because of the winter injury, our chances of having that real good corn or grain sorghum crop are greatly reduced that year. The other thing is we normally out in this area, uh, we start off with a good winter wheat crop. That's really the key. And then corn or grain sorghum. And then we follow it and go back to wheat, and try to get that good wheat crop again. Well, if we don't have that good wheat crop to start with, and then we won't have as good a corn or as grain sorghum crop, we don't have the residue for that fallow period. And so it really, we can, suffering from this wheat to crop in 2015, can carry over for a number of years. Bob says if farmers decide to let wheat grow, they'll need to keep an eye on weed control, as weeds will come in easier without crop competition. On the Market Journal website, we'll link to the NEB guide Bob mentioned containing more information on assessing damage and estimating yield potential.